zero joules. What is my initial potential energy? And that one is the NGH. H initial. So what is the mass? Four kilograms. What is G? Meters per second squared. <laughs> Meters per second squared. Yeah, and then initial height. The initial. Is it fifty meters? meters? What'd you say? Fifty meters. So why is the initial height fifty meters? Because that's the length of the whole situation. Oh no, that's not the reason. Oh. Uh -oh. Somebody else say something else, Deborah. I was just going to say what was that? Uh, what was your smart-ass response? I said because that's what people want to know. Oh, oh true, true. That's not the reason why. True. It's true. Yeah. There's a different smart-ass response that I was interviewing you for. Because the starting at 50 meters, like the high point is 50 meters. So. Oh, that, yeah, I wrote that down there, but that's not why this initial height here is 50 meters. I mean, because that's when people start to drink. You, you forgot how much power you have. Actually, both of you had the same answer. Both of you had the same power. This is 50 meters? Mm -hmm. Because you said so. That's like That's the why. same thing. That's like technically the same thing. Well, all I did was write 50 meters down here. They're the ones who established that 50 meters was the initial height. So we're going to solve it with 50 meters there. Um, well, I guess I heard Latoya's voice first. As soon as she said 50 meters, she has established something. She established where height is equal to zero. And where is height equal to zero? Because she wants the initial height 50 meters. The ground? Yes. So height is equal to zero here because Latoya said so. <laughs> All right, U final, MGH final. It's still four kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. That hasn't changed. What is the final height? Zero? No, that, this one is sort of set Three. by the problem. 30. 30. 30. Yeah. 30. All right, we actually need to do some calculations here. What is the initial potential energy? Has anyone calculated it yet? <laughs> 1960. 1960. 1960. Mm -hmm. We get confirmation? Yeah. Got a couple nods. All right. Oh, let's do it. Come on, finish it up. Mm -hmm. oh, you final? Uh, not what it's going for. No. I think you said it. Oh. All right. Is my hearing off today, or yeah. why are you? Yeah. Okay. There's a party All right. Time. <laughs> no, <it's not> <laughs> you know, spend all night talking physics. It's not going to affect you. All right, and the other one. One thousand one hundred seventy-six. Yes. All right. What is my initial total energy? How'd you get that? 1960 plus zero. Yes. When I'm talking my total initial, that's the total, that's my initial kinetic, initial potential. You add these two together. What's my final total energy? Do we know that? Can you just add it together? Uh, you're going way complicated. It's a simpler answer than. 11706? Nope. Oh. Is it still 1960? It's still 1960. Um, why? It stays the same. <clears throat> why does it stay the same? Because of the first example we did. I don't know the actual explanation. Because it's conserved? 
It is. Why is it conserved? <laughs> you don't have that much power. <laughs> what about the weight? And what about weight? Exactly. But she says you're speaking low. Huh? If you're talking low, I'm here. Oh, I said that the weight was a conserved force. That's why it's the same. The only force acting on it is a conservative force. Mm -hmm. So, energy is conserved. Okay. So, my final energy 1960 joules. But I have 1176 joules of potential here. What happened to that potential energy? I lost potential energy. Where'd it go? On vacation. <laughs> oh, it did more than that. Heat and sound? Say it again. Heat and sound? No, not in our, we're in a nice ideal situation. There is oh. no heat and sound. In reality, sorry. No, it didn't disappear. Energy is conserved, so it can't just disappear. Oh, yeah. um, on the heat and sound bit, that's generally where discrepancies will come into. Will come in. So when you're doing uh, a lab, your final results and your initial, your final energy and initial energy probably are not going to be the same. If everything is done perfectly in real world, you should end up with less energy at the end than you start with then that would go into heat and sound. In a situation like this, if I drop an object, yes, it would heat up some. You might hear it, but that would not explain the entire discrepancy. Kinetic energy? Somebody just said it? Kinetic energy? Exactly, that's where it went. It's gotta go somewhere. The energy just basically gets shifted from potential into kinetic. So here's the hand visual. We start out with no kinetic and all potential. And as it falls, they just start shifting from one type to the other. Now, it doesn't go all the way because Latoya said so, but it goes part way. No, it just doesn't run to up again. Ah, okay. It comes back. All right. So, how much kinetic energy do we have now? So are we going to be subtracting um, the 1176 from the 1960? I hope so. I hope so too. <clears throat> so we can set up the math problem a couple different ways, but which is if we do subtract in here, so that's four. Seven eighty four. Okay. So I have seven hundred and eighty four joules of potential that I've lost. It goes into kinetic. So my kinetic in the end, I started with zero, is zero plus 784. <laughs> Do the fancy math there, 784. And that's equal to one half times the mass times the speed squared. And isn't that how we find the, the, the speed, the velocity? This is how we find the speed. Was that, was that your question? Well, no, because the next we have to find VF, right? Yes, we know, want to know how fast it's going. So this is... And we use that equation, right? Yeah, this is... Once we figure out how much kinetic energy is, we set it equal to what half mv squared. So I guess that is VF right there. So it's 784 the total. Yep, that's the total amount of kinetic. Why do you, why do you write that next to it? Like the... Why do I write this next to it? Yeah. All right. The question is, is how fast is it going? Speed. Kinetic energy has speed in it. That's the energy of speed. So once, so the general technique is you figure out how much kinetic energy it has at this point, and then you plug it, then you go back to the formula here to find how, how fast does it need to be going for it to have that much kinetic energy. That's not the look of, oh, of course. <laughs> no, I mean, it kind of looks like I forgot it was because it was in kinetic energy. What does 784 mean? 
what the 784 mean? Yes. That's how much potential energy was lost. Okay. That was converted into the Exactly. Do we have to write that next to that? When, if we write out both the kinetic energy, is it a half, one half? Or is that just part of the problem? Writing this out? Yeah. Well, at some point, we need to find speed here. So at some point, I'm going to be setting 784 oh. to 1 half mv squared. Okay. The mass. Yeah. You're just testing it. I feel like there are a few other questions left hanging out there on the floor there. Is there a question I have not answered yet or that need to answer differently? So, we'll figure out the initial energy given the initial kinetic plus the potential, which was 1960, or 1960 in the final problem. Because it doesn't have, well, I don't know how much 1960 you're talking about. This 1960 gets combined with zero that gave you a total energy of 1960. That's how much energy we have at the end. I know that 1176 of this is potential. So whatever the difference is technically between these two numbers is the amount of kinetic we have. So technically we're not using that 1960, we're using this 1960. Now we're down to this problem right here. 784 is equal to 2v squared. That's the final squared. 30, 392 is equal to v squared. What I, I, heard, I heard you say MS. Uh, the, the, there's something in between the M and the S. Maybe it's just for this. What? Meters. Meters. Meters per second. Meters per second. Meters per second. Yeah. You forgot the first. That's what I meant by M because I should have just said. Okay. So it's going almost 20 meters a second. I have a question. Yes. Can you do that again, but with the units? So I can see why it's oh, meters per second. Here? Yes. Okay. You want me to start at this point or start at that point or farther back? Um, where it's circled is fine. Okay, starting there. Looking at units. So 784 joules is equal to one half times four kilograms times v squared. I'm gonna drop my subscript F just for simplicity. All right, so first one half times four kilograms is two kilograms. 784 joules. Then I'm gonna divide both sides by two kilograms. So on the right hand side, the twos cancel out and the kilograms cancel out. So I'm left with V squared is equal to 392 joules per kilogram. Square root both sides. And so we get, uh, I think square root of 392, somewhere around 19.8. So. And then our unit here, since I did the square root, is the square root of a joule per kilogram which clearly is a meter per second. All right, are you good here before I talk about how this, that gets to here? Yes. All right, a joule. Uh, I'm gonna keep that, I'm assuming you still know what that problem is. 
Remember that the unit of work is a, is a joule, the international standard. Work is force times displacement. So the unit of work is the unit of force times the unit of displacement. So a joule is a Newton meter. A Newton, if you go back to F equals MA, the unit of force is the unit of mass times the unit of acceleration. So a Newton is a kilogram times meter per second squared. Matter of fact, that's by definition. So I can take that, substitute that for Newtons, plug that up here. So we have a joule is equal to a kilogram times meter per second squared times meter, which is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. Now when I divide by kilograms over there, the kilograms goes away and I'm left with meter squared per second squared. So this becomes 19.80 square root of meter squared per second squared, which is just meters per second. Oh, okay, gotcha. Thank you. Yep. It's generally easier to start out with international standard units and just the answer is going to be the same system. But I guess on a test or quiz, if you wrote square root of joules per kilogram, that's not wrong. Uh, I'm going to do the I'm going to do the exact same one. I'm going to write it up differently, uh, and then I'm going to do it where Latoya is not dictating where zero is. So the exact same problem, we'll still stick with h is equal to zero down at the bottom. Non-conservative work is equal to the change in energy. We're gonna start with that. We've already established that there's no non-conservative force involved in this problem. So that's zero is equal to E final minus E initial. It's supposed to be a subscript there. Eh, better. Just adding the initial to both sides because if the difference is zero, they, these things must be equal to each other. So my initial energy is equal to my final energy. That's the whole conservation of energy right there. I have two types of energy. Excuse me, two types of energy. I have initial kinetic plus initial potential is equal to final kinetic plus final potential because those are my only two types. I have a formula for these, one half mv initial squared plus mgh initial equals one half mv final squared plus mgh final. We did the exact same thing, just I presented it differently before. Now you plug and chug, so this is one half times zero, oops, sorry, wrong place, one half times four times zero squared plus four times 9.8 times 50 equals 1 half times 4 times v final squared plus 4 times 9.8 times 30. Just step by step. This right here is zero. That's my initial kinetic energy. That's what we had established because it's not moving. This right here is my initial potential energy, which was 1960. Are you just showing us another way how to do it? Pardon? Are you just showing us another way to do it? Yes. Okay. This is my final potential energy. Thank you. Plus whatever that is. 
so because there's a plus sign in the middle of it. So whenever you're solving for an unknown, you get rid of all the peripheral stuff first. This is the farthest disconnected from V, so we have to subtract that from both sides. And that was the 7, 784. So 784 is equal to 2 V final squared. And then we're back to where we were. So we just start out with a certain amount of energy, certain amount of kinetic and potential. It goes through some process. We end up with a different amount of, the, of potential at the end. Whatever we lost had to be gained by kinetic. Or if we ended up with more potential, kinetic would have had to we would have to take it somewhere from kinetic and put it into potential. Did you just drop the V squared from the two? Oh, that, that's a part of a question mark right there. Add a little bit too much flair to the question. All right, so the exact same problem, just presented differently. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now I want to solve the exact same problem, except this time I want to put h is equal to zero in a different spot. Now, typically, when you're doing a problem with energy, it's nice when you can get rid of some of the variables you're working with. So that means since the problem starts here and ends here, making height is equal to zero here or here makes sense. One of those two spots. It doesn't matter which one. I think more people are comfortable with positive potential energies. So I'm gonna make my h is equal to zero here. Because I say so. My initial kinetic is still zero. Moving where h is equal to zero does not change at all the, its initial speed. So my initial kinetic is still zero 